So you want to be untraceable online, completely invisible, a digital ghost, no small feats to accomplish. Maybe you watched Mr. Robot once and now you're ready to outwit the NSA, the FBI, and every bored data broker with a Wi-Fi connection. Well, buckle up because the only foolproof way to be 100% untraceable is to do exactly what this wise Redditor suggested. Turn off your pewter and go outside. Of course, that kind of defeats the purpose, doesn't it? We like being online. We just don't like being tracked, profiled, and watched like a hawk. So today, let's talk about what being untraceable really means and whether you can actually pull it off, especially here in the good old United States of Surveillance. Spoiler, completely untraceable? Probably not. But difficult to trace? All right. That, my friends, is a game that we can play. And play it we shall. First, what does untraceable even mean? Are we asking for some mythical spell? When people say untraceable, they usually mean that nothing that they do online can be traced back to them and their real identity. No breadcrumbs. No data crumbs? Nada. In an ideal scenario, you're a ghost. You post, you browse, you lurk, my favorite. And no one, not your ISP, not Google, not even the NSA's top secret Utah database, can figure out who, what, or where you are. Excuse me, it's ma'am. It is ma'am. Ma'am. Once again, ma'am. This here is the NSA's Utah data center. It's a giant fortress in the Utah desert that allegedly, allegedly, stores unimaginable amounts of intercept the data. Yes, your tax dollars paid for a $1.5 billion facility to collect all the things. Being untraceable means that even facilities like these come up blank when they look for you. <laughs> Ambitious, isn't it? Now, to be clear, there's a difference between privacy and anonymity. If you just want to keep your stuff private, then you want to control who has access to your data. Anonymity is just outright hiding who you are, like me. But keep in mind that whatever your end goal here is, if you're trying to hide from advertisers and nosy companies, or if you're trying to dodge the CIA, the FBI, the NSA, the PTA, and every other three-letter agency, the steps are gonna differ a lot, depending on who's after you. <laughs> Hopefully no one's after you. <laughs> no one's after me, right? If you're just sick of personalized ads, tracking your shoe size, relax. You don't need to launch yourself into full fugitive mode, but if you're aiming to be an internet ninja that even the NSA can't catch, well, in the US, that's like trying to win a game against someone with a thermal drone and a pack of bloodhounds. In other words, it's tough. Fun fact, in leaked rules for the X-Key score program, the NSA literally flags people who just visit privacy websites, like you searched for Tor or read about Linux, and boom, you're marked as an extremist. All for being curious about privacy. So in the US, if you try too hard to be anonymous, you ironically stick out even more. It's the old wear a mask in a bank problem. Sure, it hides your face, but now everyone's watching the guy in a mask. Speaking of which, is the NSA watching me now more? Hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, what kind of security solutions are available? So let's say you're undeterred by everything I just said. You're going full Batman Gotham mode, no pair, no traces. What do you do? Well, you use a layered approach because there's no single magic tool that makes you invisible. Think of it kind of like an onion. We love onion analogies. Multiple layers of protection. It all comes full circle back to onions, I swear. Cybersecurity. It's just an onion. So hardware and network hygiene. Your device itself can give you away. Ideally, use a burner device. <laughs> There's a reason they throw these in movies. Something bought with cash or crypto, if you can manage that, not linked to you. Maybe a laptop from a pawn shop or a cheap phone from a gas station. Paid in green paper, no receipts. And if you get a receipt, burn it. Because if your laptop's serial number or your phone's IMEI is tied to you in any way, that's a direct trace. Next. Your MAC address. That's a unique ID. Your Wi-Fi chip broadcasts to routers. By default, it's shouting, hey look, it's John's MacBook, every time you connect. So it's best to randomize it. Now, modern operating systems have tools or settings where you can randomize or rotate your MAC address periodically. Now, it won't stop a nation state actor, but it stops the coffee shop Wi-Fi from recognizing your device ID. Also, pro tip, don't name your device John Doe's iPhone or Susan's PC. Yes, people do that. Rename it to something generic or just gibberish. Every little bit helps. If an investigator sees logs of a device named FBI surveillance car number four, actually that might be pretty funny, but you get my point. If you can consider a dedicated router or a 
special gadget that forces all your traffic through Anemone networks by default. There are projects like the Tor routers you can build on a Raspberry Pi called a Tor box that will funnel everything through Tor. That way, even your toaster in your fridge are accidentally anonymous. Because who knows, your fridge might be telling the NSA who you are. Now, outside of hardware, let's talk about operating systems. Running Windows 11 with your named user account while trying to remain untraceable is like if I wore a name tag right now saying my full name. What would be the point of wearing the mask? Instead, you want a privacy-focused operating system, something like Tails or Hunix. Hunix is a Linux-based operating system specifically designed for anonymity. It actually runs as two virtual machines. One routes all your network traffic through Tor, and the other is where you do your stuff. The workstation only talks to the internet through the Tor gateway. This setup means that even if you screw up and some app tries to reveal your IP, it can't, because by default, it's trapped behind a Tor wall. And Hunix comes with a lot of privacy tools right out the box or browser, safe defaults, stuff like that. Now, Tails is another option. It's a live operating system that you boot off of a USB stick, forces all traffic over Tor as well. And when you shut it down, it leaves no traces on the host machine. Basically, it's like Mission Impossible, but with a self-destructing operating system. No logs left behind, it's a very nice. Now a seasoned privacy guru will tell you that even operating systems can only go so far. They help a lot, but if you misconfigure something or reveal info in other ways, the jig is up. Still, if you're trying to be a ghost, using a purpose-built operating system is kind of a no-brainer. Your IP address is one of the biggest breadcrumbs. It's like your house address on the internet. If you use your home IP, it's game over immediately. That's tied to your ISP account and by extension you. So you need to mask your IP. Get it? Ah, 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 ah. So what are your options? VPNs, Tor, and proxies, or even chaining them together. VPNs, most of you know about this one. It routes your traffic through a server run by a VPN provider. So the website see the VPN's IP, not yours. But here's the catch. You're basically handing all your internet traffic over to the VPN provider, so you better trust them. Most good VPNs will claim the no logs policy, which means that they swear that they don't record what you do, but we have to take their word for it. And some have been caught lying. And also, pro tip, I didn't know about this until I looked it up. If a VPN is headquartered in a country that's a part of the Five Eyes, sounds like a Naruto Believe reference, it. I know. The Five Eyes Intelligence Alliance, the US, UK, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, or other surveillance heavy jurisdictions, think twice about that VPN. Law enforcement and intelligence can compel companies in these countries to hand over data or even start logging. For instance, the NSA and its buddies have legal authority to force force even no log VPNs to cough up info. On the other hand, some VPN providers have proven their no log policy in court. And I'm not gonna name Jordan specifically, but a certain Swedish VPN, that was my attempt at a Swedish accent, was raided by the police and they had to leave because they straight up had nothing. It was gone. Look for VPNs like that. So if you go the VPN route, pick a provider known for privacy and, and ideally in a privacy friendly place. Switzerland, anyone? Make sure that you pay anonymously. Don't just use your credit card. Most good VPNs these days will take gift cards or crypto. And don't use your personal email to register. Common sense, folks. That way your account isn't obviously linked to you. Tor, this is the big one. Tor is a free network that bounces your traffic through multiple volunteer run nodes, servers all over the world. Like taking a very convoluted route to a website. The connection goes through, say, three nodes, each encrypted in layers, hence the onion name. The entry node knows you. The exit node knows what site you're accessing, but not who you are. No single node knows the whole chain. It's pretty freaking awesome. And it gives strong anonymity. At the cost of speed, Tor is slow compared to the normal internet. You're certainly not gonna be gaming on that or streaming 4K through Tor. Forget about it. But for web browsing, chatting, or accessing .onion sites, it's the gold standard for anonymity. And the Tor browser is what most people use, but in some countries, Tor is outright blocked or even illegal. We see you China and Russia. <laughs> Thankfully in the US, Tor is legal. <laughs> Just maybe don't brag about it on Facebook with your real name. For maximum security, the hardcore folks will combine VPNs and Tor and proxies in various orders, like connect to a VPN, then launch Tor browser. So even your ISP only sees VPN traffic, but can't see what you do on Tor. There are also fancy setups, like running Tor inside of a VPN, inside of another VPN. <laughs> At some point, the chain might get ridiculous and very slow, but it can add resistance against cyber attacks and tracking. Just be careful though, because combining tools can sometimes backfire if you do it wrong. Example, misconfigured VPNs could leak your IP while you thought you were 
hidden. But first, a word from our sponsor. Floppy data. Are you facing IP bans? Are you managing multiple accounts? And getting flagged because they're all coming from your lonely single home or business IP address? Floppy data has you covered. With over 195 plus countries and millions of clean IPs. Emphasis on the clean. Problem with alternative methods of routing your traffic to a different IP address is speed. Example, the Tor browser. Yeah, it routes all your traffic through a Tor node to hide your activity, but at the cost of your sanity, with web pages taking minutes to load, ain't nobody got time for that. Whether you're trying to run a web scraper for whatever reason, to each their own, trying to access geolog stuff without any of the fluff that comes with other services, or you just want to browse stuff anonymously. Floppy Data has you covered with one of the most affordable and reliable proxies available. Residential, mobile, or data center options. Static IPs, dynamic IPs. They've got what you need. And with pricing that starts at 90 cents a gig, if you're looking for a proxy, look no further than floppy data. And if you're interested in checking it out, link is down below. Now there is a thing called browser and app compartmentalization. Try saying that three times fast. Imagine you've got an anonymous operating system running on a burner laptop behind a VPN and Tor. You're practically a secret agent now, but you open up a browser and you log into a personal Gmail or Facebook account. You just linked back to your real identity. OPSEC fail. Now, OPSEC is a huge part of all this. You must compartmentalize your online activities, separate the persona that's anonymous from the one that's you in real life. This means no logging into personal accounts on your ghost setup. Create new email accounts, preferably with something like ProtonMail or Tuta, formerly known as Tutanota, that does not require your real info. Use encrypted messaging like Signal for communications. I use Signal personally. And again, use a new phone number for setups like that or a secondary phone. That's not actually your real cell phone number. For each anonymous persona that you operate, use unique usernames and passwords that you've never used before anywhere else, and even consider your writing style if you want to be extra careful. Believe it or not, this was news to me as well at some point, people can be identified by how they write. It's called stylometry. If you always spell a certain word wrong or say something like okie dokie, that could link your alias back to you. Neat, huh? Some experts say that to truly be able to do a different persona, you practically need to have a split personality disorder. Like me! They were joking, I think, but, but the point stands. You need to mentally separate yourself from your real life and your anonymous life. No crossover. That means if your real name is John and you love posting about football on your personal Twitter, your anonymous handle should not be ranting about the same game with the same writing style on the same forum. You'd be surprised by how little it takes for investigators to connect the dots. Here's a cool new modern approach. Use browser isolation or cloud containers for extra safety. Instead of browsing directly from your home machine, you can spin up a temporary web browser in the cloud. Tools like Chasm Workspaces can provide a disposable browser on a remote server. Think of it like a throwaway desktop in the cloud. You can do all your sketchy or privacy conscious browsing there. If any malware tries to infect you, it infects the container and not the machine. And when you're done, destroy the container. Poof, all gone. Now the remote server IP is what gets seen by websites and not yours. Similarly, you can rent out a cheap virtual private network under an alias and use it as a relay or for browsing. Essentially, it's like your own personal VPN node that you control. Just be cognizant that paying for a VPS service usually leaves a trail. Again, try using crypto or gift cards and register with an email alias, the usual stuff. Encryption, everywhere. Encrypt all the things. Make sure that all your communication is encrypted. Use HTTPS only, which is a standard now for websites anyways. Use end-to-end -end encrypted chat signal WhatsApp and make sure you make note of what's tied to a phone number like WhatsApp or truly anonymous chat, perhaps something like Session, which is a fork of Signal that can work without phone numbers or XMPP with Omemo. If you're emailing, use PGP or a service that does automatic end-to-end -end encryption like ProtonMail. That way, if even someone intercepts your message, all they get is ciphertext that they can't read. But also, mind your metadata. Even if content is encrypted, who you talk to, when and how long gets leaked. A former CIA NSA director famously said, we kill people based on metadata. Yeah. Uh, he meant in counterterrorism, of course, but it highlights that metadata can reveal almost anything about your habits and your relationships without even having to see the message. So try to minimize metadata. Use Tor to hide your IP when messaging, send messages at random intervals, not Monday at 8 a.m. on the clock. This is spy level stuff. <laughs> so decide for yourself how far down the rabbit hole you need to go. But at the end of it all, it always comes back to behaviors. Even the strongest privacy setup 
can be defeated by one oopsie daisy, like using your secure alias account from your home Wi-Fi just once or mentioning your hometown in an anonymous forums post. OPSEC is a lifestyle, not a one-time install. It requires constant vigilance. Think of all the high profile hackers and black market operators who got caught almost always. It wasn't their encryption that was failing. It was human error. Boy, ain't that the truth with cybersecurity. For example, the founder of the Silk Road Marketplace, Ras Ulbrich, went to extreme lengths to hide his online drug empire through Tor. Yet he got caught because he reused an online username from an old forum and even posted his personal email in the early days of Silk Road. One tiny lapse and it gives investigators enough of a lead to piece things together until the whole thing is unraveled and boom goes the dynamite. And you will make mistakes. Being anonymous is hard. As one online commenter put it, you'll spend years working towards the goal, make plenty of mistakes, you might not even realize it, get so good to the point that the CIA or the NSA could hire you. If they never give you a call, maybe you succeeded? And if they do knock at your door, well, point proven. Being completely untraceable was a tad bit unrealistic. By now you might be thinking, sheesh, this sounds like a full-time job. Bingo. Achieving near anonymity is a part-time job at minimum and a full-on lifestyle at the most. For an average person, it's probably overkill to do everything, but there's good news. You don't have to be 100% untraceable to greatly improve your privacy and your security. Just doing a few things like VPN or Tor or proxy for sensitive browsing, using encrypted communication methods, disabling invasive trackers, stuff like that will put you miles ahead of the average internet user. The goal is to ultimately reduce your digital footprint, make tracking hard and protect yourselves from the easy grabs of data out there. And our data is getting leaked a lot. You may not have to evade a determined national intelligence agency, but you can absolutely evade script kitty hackers, nosy coworkers, or data hungry corporations. And if I may be frank, that covers 99% of threats that people actually face. In the US, we do have an uphill battle with surveillance. The legal framework often favors law enforcement or intel agencies over personal privacy. The Patriot Act of 2001, for example, authorized unprecedented spying on Americans and folks worldwide. Even though some parts of it did expire, the surveillance infrastructure it built still exists. Companies too track the hell out of us, building profiles from our search queries, purchases, Facebook likes, social media interactions. But luckily, public awareness and the demand for privacy is growing. Encryption is more mainstream now. VPNs are advertised everywhere. I'm guilty of that one. There's a push for privacy laws. And if you're aiming to work in cybersecurity, tinkering with these anonymity tools is actually a great way to learn. You'll understand how networks and systems actually work. And you'll develop a security mindset, or as I like to call it, an overly anxious, paranoid mindset. Setting up Hunix, practicing OPSEC, using Tor, that's hands-on experience that employers will value and at the very least will show that you're passionate about the field. Just maybe don't tell your job interviewer that you spent your weekends trying to be untraceable because you're hiding from the NSA, unless you phrase it very carefully. So is it possible to be completely untraceable in the United States? The honest answer, effectively untraceable. Maybe if you're extremely disciplined, lucky, and you only face moderate adversaries, completely untraceable against a US government investigation? Probably not with the current tech. And there's an old saying, the only true secure system is one that is powered off, cast in a block of concrete, and sealed in a lead-lined room with armed guards. And even then I have my doubts. Now instead of chasing perfection, aim for progress. Use the tools as practices at your disposal to reduce your traceability. Be aware of the information that you give out publicly and freely, and improve the privacy where you can. Think of it kind of like healthy eating. You might not become a chiseled Olympian, but every cheeseburger that you don't eat helps. In the same way, every bit of data that you don't give out to marketers and spies is a a win for you and frankly a win for society. The more average people that use encryption and privacy tools, the harder it is for mass surveillance to target everyone. So go forth my privacy padawans. With realistic expectations in hand, you probably won't vanish like a puff of smoke in the digital world, but you can become a lot harder to follow. And in a world with everyone's info is up for grabs, that's something to be proud of. But don't do anything too illegal out there. I don't need the FBI knocking down my door. Whichever FBI or NSA agent is assigned my my file right now. This is all for purely educational purposes. Oh.